This is an example of an easy level problem on the Bode plots uh, game in Circuit Tutor. So there are, of course, examples available, as always, at, at multiple levels of difficulty, and it's strongly recommended that you view some of those examples uh, before attempting the exercises, as well as, of course, looking at the introductory um, tutorial, which is shown on the main screen uh, for Bode plots. So let's look at a typical problem. Um, the first step here, it gives us a transfer function, h of j omega. Um, and the first part is to find the limits of this function when omega goes to zero and when omega goes to infinity. So in this case, that's fairly straightforward. When omega goes to zero, um, we're just going to have 25 times 4, or 100. So I'll enter that here. And when omega goes to infinity, clearly this will go to positive infinity. So to enter infinity, I simply um, click the infinity button here rather than trying to type anything. Or likewise, if it went to negative infinity, I would click over here. And you can do that in either of these two limits. So now we'll check that. And that is correct. And I'll print the answers on the screen. Um, part B, which has to do with filter type, um, and the order of the filter is not applicable here uh, because this is not a conventional um, type of filter. But if you were answering, answering that uh, question, you would look at these limits and use that to do deduce the type of filter. So for example, if this limit were 100 and this limit were 0, that would be a low-pass filter, or the reverse would be a high-pass filter. OK, so the next uh, task is to put this uh, function into standard form. And in standard form, as the instructions tell us, the uh, constant in each term is going to be 1. So in this case, um, I'm going to need a uh, 1 plus j omega term. So I can click on that, or I can also drag it. Right? You can do either one. And also, if you want to get rid of those terms, you just drag them out of the equation entry area. So I need a constant in front of that. So I'll click a k here. Um, and again, I can drag it around wherever I want it. Um, so in this case, I basically need to factor a 4 out of there, which will give me a factor of 100 in the prefactor. So I'll put that there. And then um, I'll be dividing this by 4. And that, of course, will be equivalent to the original term, because that means I'm going to have uh, 100, which is the constant, um, plus 25 times j omega. So that'll be equivalent. So now I'll just uh, check that. And that is correct. And that will, of course, print the uh, correct answer here. Now the next step is to find the magnitude of that function. Remember, that's a complex valued function, since it has a j in there, which, of course, is the square root of negative 1. So now I need to use the standard uh, formulas for magnitude. So several things we want to remember here, just doing this in general. Uh, one is that the magnitude of our product is the product of the magnitudes. That just follows from the basic properties of how you multiply um, complex numbers. And similarly, if I had a quotient here, which I don't in this case, um, the uh, quotient of, or the magnitude of a quotient rather, is the quotient of the magnitudes of the individual terms. Now in this case, I don't have a, a product or a quotient, so I don't need those rules. Um, but what I do need to remember, of course, is that when we have a sum like this, we have a real part of 1. We have an imaginary part of omega over 4. So we'll use the standard formula for the magnitude of a complex number, which would be the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So in order to construct that, um, basically, um, let's see, I'm going to use a uh, brackets here. And the bracket is what I, how I make a square root. So I'll enter n there to be 1 half, or 0 0.5. And so I'm going to need a 1 uh, for the first part, and then a plus sign. So I just enter that. Or I can actually click on this area, too. And then if I just click here, um, that will automatically enter that. So now I need um, an omega over 4 quantity squared. So that's that type of term. So I just clicked on that and put it right in there for me. And so that's going to be omega over 4, um, the quantity squared. Now, because, again, we need the real part squared, which is just 1 squared is 1, plus the imaginary part squared is just omega over 4 quantity squared. So I can enter it that way. Um, then I also need the constant out front. Um, so I'll put that down here, and that will be a factor of 100, OK, because the magnitude squared. Of course, if that were a negative number, then taking magnitude of a real number is, of course, the same as just taking its absolute value. So if this were negative 100, for example, I would enter positive 100 down here. So that should be the magnitude. 
and I'll just check that. And that is correct. Of course, at any point, if you do get stuck, you can always click that Give Up button, um, and uh, and then you'll be shown the complete solution, and then you can uh, continue the problem. Okay, so it's printed what we did here, which was the magnitude, um, showing as a square root, which is the same thing as the one half power, of course, that uh, we'd enter. Okay, so the next task um, is to approximate this transfer function in each region of frequency. So as it tells us, the break frequency here is four radians per second. That's the denominator. Um, for the omega term, um, and that means we can use different approximations for omega much less than 4 and for omega much greater than 4. And um, so here we're supposed to enter uh, those approximations. We can either enter power of omega, which gives us this format, or if it's just going to be a constant, we could just change it to a constant. And we're asked to do this both in terms of just a magnitude um, and then to convert that to decibels, which we'll do over here. So let's first do this. So if omega is much less than 4, that means that this term is going to be very small compared to 1. And so a zeroth order approximation there would just be to neglect this term. And that means that I will simply have 100. And that's really just going to be a constant. So I'll just put it like that. Um, I could have, I suppose, put omega to the zero power, but it's easier, I think, just to enter it this way. And then the next thing we want to do is to convert that to decibels. And remember the formula for decibels for a voltage or current gain, which this uh, presumably is. Um, and that should be presumed for all these problems, is 20 um, times the log to the base 10 of this number. So here I don't even need a calculator, because that's very simple. So the log to the base 10 of 100, of course, is 2. 2 times 20 would be 40 dBs. So that corresponds to a value of 40 dBs. Okay, so now um, for omega uh, greater, or really much greater than 4 radians per second, um, the asymptotic approximation is to neglect this term because this is now much bigger than 1 and therefore this will be essentially negligible. So now the square root of this term will just give me 100 omega divided by 4 or simply 25 omega. And again, I, can, I could work that out on paper, but it's not really necessary here. Uh, so 25 omega. So I'll enter that as a power of omega. So I'll just put my 25 there. And in this case, the power would just, of course, be 1 since it's 25 omega. Um, now I need to convert that to uh, decibels. Um, and remember that as I take the logarithm of a product, um, using the basic properties of logarithms, that will of course be the sum of the logs of the individual things. So the log of 25, um, I'll have to use my calculator for that. So that will be, um, let's see, the log of 25, and then I multiply that by 20 to convert to dBs. Um, and that is uh, 27.96 uh, dB. And you don't have to enter it to that many digits, but um, it won't hurt. It, it is supposed to be accurate to 1%. And then um, here I have the term that comes from um, the omega to the 1 power. So, of course, that's just going to give me log omega. And so um, that's going to be a slope of uh, plus 1 because when I take that, it would just be 1 times log omega. And 1 times log omega, remember that's a slope of 20 dBs uh, per decade. And remember that when you increase by a factor of 10, which is a decade, then that corresponds to um, increasing the logarithm by 1. And therefore times 20, that's 20 decibels per decade is the slope. And that's, of course, explained in more detail in the introductory tutorial and also in the examples. Um, which will uh, show you, you know, some great ideas about how to work these problems. So that should be the correct answer. And that is correct. Okay, so now we have our approximate uh, expressions here for the magnitude of h of j omega for those two regions. Again, these are the asymptotes. So these, of course, are equations of a straight line on logarithmic axes. And remember, decibels are inherently logarithmic. So even though our axis here is labeled in decibels. It's not a logarithmic axis. That's still basically a logarithmic axis because a decibel is by nature a logarithmic unit. So now it asks me to find the magnitude um, at each breakpoint and sketch the Bode plot. So <clears throat> the slope um, to the right of negative infinity, well, um, that would include this region. And so there, that's just uh, clearly zero slope because it has a fixed value. So we just enter a zero there. And after the break point, now we have a slope of 20 dB per decade. So I'm just putting in basically that coefficient here. 
Um, the magnitude of the break point, well, um, the easiest way to compute that is just to look at this because that gives us 40. Um, if I had to, I could plug in 4 and take the logarithm of that, multiply it by 20, and add to 28. That would be the other way of computing 40. And you can uh, pretty easily check that, in fact, you'd also get 40 um, doing it that way. Now, the last item um, is the exact value um, minus the asymptotic value at the intercept. So we know the asymptotic value at the intercept is going to be 40 dB. So I basically want to know the exact value. So there's several ways to do that. One would be to put in omega equals 4 here and evaluate this exact value. In this case, it's, it's fairly simple. So it would just be 100 times the square root of 2, or uh, 1.41. And then we need to convert that to uh, decibels. Now, because this is a first order uh, pull, all right, uh, yeah, well, basically a pull at infinity, um, this is uh, uh, fairly simple to do because anytime you have a first order break point, it's going to be, in this case, um, 3 dBs um, because this is breaking upwards, it'll be 3 dBs um, above the value. And so we could actually just enter 3 dBs there, um, and that should be fine. So now we'll plot, having entered, filled in the table, now we click the plot button because it won't let us check the answer until we've plotted it. Um, and there's the plot basically um, of what we just entered, basically just putting straight lines in there for that. And now we can check it. And that is correct. Um, the exact value, I guess, was 3.01 dB, but 3 is, is certainly close enough for that. In fact, that doesn't have to be accurate to 1%. That can be actually um, off. You know, you can use the approximate formulas, and it, that will accept that. Okay, so now we have the exact curve, and basically um, we're finished. Um, if you wish, you can display this on a linear horizontal axis to see how it looks there, or a linear vertical axis, um, or both um, at the same time, if you wish. Um, but that's not required. And that basically uh, completes the example.